Hey everybody, Kelly here. So it's been a while, huh? Um, two weeks, three weeks. Three weeks, I think. Today is November 16th. And I think the last time I filmed was in October, right before Halloween. So I think in that video I was talking about uh, starting the fall barn quilt. So I did actually get that started, but let me slide you over to the side and you can see what progress I've made. <laughs> so I think you can see it all there. So I just basically got started on piecing together the patchwork blocks for the leaves. So, yeah. So I've basically made my blocks. Obviously the others were cut out from a panel and then I just assembled these blocks here. I haven't quite got the sashing on yet. So the pattern actually called for you to cut the sashing to certain lengths by to cut it with the fabric and cut them certain lengths. I actually just cut it with the fabric and I haven't cut the lengths yet. I just figured I'd put the um, sashing on and cut it off where, where I needed to. And then uh, I'll make sure that all of my blocks measure 16 and a half inches, trim them down, sew them together, and then we sew on the outer sashing for the whole quilt. You actually sew on, let me turn it upside, so sew on a little inside sashing outside of the whole quilt. And then I've gone ahead and cut the pieces for the border, but the pattern actually called for them to be cut. You just literally cut it um, six inches by width of fabric. So if anybody has this quick kit and hasn't made it yet, um, I'm going to give a little tip. The pattern calls for you just to cut the six inches by width of fabric, but they actually include enough fabric in the kit to be able to so like if you, okay, so it calls for you cutting it by with the fabric, sew all the pieces together, and then cut them to um, the length of the sides or the width of the top and bottom. And so your seams are going to be just wherever. Well, I thought, well, if I'm going to have to have seams in it anyway, I might as well plan it so that I can have directional fabric on the sides. So basically how this picture looks, you can see the fabric is actually sideways. So I didn't really want that to happen, so I needed to determine whether my piece that I needed to cut it out of was going to be big enough for me to be able to cut this um, directionally instead of having it go sideways. So I figured out that it is. I do have to piece two pieces together for each side. That's okay. I was gonna the, their directions were gonna have me piece it and just cut it wherever and have the seams wherever. Um, so I'd rather just have know that I'm gonna have a seam right in the center, or I can offset it. I could put one at the top and one at the bottom on the other side, something like that. And then for the um, top and bottom, I believe I'm gonna have to have. A small piece on each side so anyhow I just it made more sense to me to be able to try to get this side piece to be directional fabric so I think the first one I showed you here that's these are gonna be the sides so you know the barns are gonna be face up instead of sideways so I think that's gonna work out much nicer um, not that there's anything really wrong with this or anything it's just your eye would have kind of automatically gone to that border being sideways. And if you got to have seams in weird spots anyway, you might as well have the fabric be facing upright. So that will hopefully be getting done this weekend. Fingers crossed. <laughs> right. So I'm going to work on that this weekend, and then I'm thinking for the background, I have, basically I have the kit here. So this was the box that the kit came in, but this actually is, these are the fabrics. These are all the fabrics that I have left from the actual kit. 
Um, and I could make them up into something to do a patch for the back, but it's not going to be nearly enough. And so from So Yeah last year, I not only bought the kit at one time, but then, you know, like a month or two later or something, I, I've probably purchased their scrap bags at different times or, and or um, I think this was off of one of their three yard purchase, um, D stash three yard purchases. I think I'm going to use this for the backing on this particular quilt. And then I actually have another panel from probably one, one of the scra scrap bags. It wouldn't have been something that I ordered after I ordered the kit. Or I wouldn't have ordered the kit if I had the panel. But I probably got it out of one of their scrap bags. So I can make a second quilt. And so I also, in their de-stashing and scrap things, I also got several um, one yard bundles. So I definitely have enough here to make a whole other quilt with this panel and I even have a 10 inch stacker in here of that same fabric line. So I can make at least two, two quilts if not three quilts out of this and have plenty of backing just from what I have from this. So um, I think this is going to be for the backing on this main one that actually was the quilt kit. And then the rest of this, it might be next fall, but I will probably um, piece together another quilt from it as well, if not two. So, or I might pass the stash. Um, I might have some that I can uh, give to a friend sort of thing. All right, so that's my quilt that I'm working on for this month. So I actually have, well, I have several things going on because um of course it's getting toward Christmas time and don't we all have a lot of gift giving to do and so plans for different things getting done um for gifts and so I can't show some of those <laughs> so that's part of the reason for the breaks for my between my videos is because I'm trying to get some of that done so um but anyhow, the next quilt that I want to make is actually going to be another kit that I got also from Soya. Um, it's called Frosty Merry Mints. And so I hope to work on this possibly December, probably January though. So I think it should be fairly straightforward, very much the way this fall barn quilt was. Um, it's got a panel. And then it's so much with the borders that you really just have to piece the inside portion right here. So I think it should be fairly straightforward and easy for me to go ahead and get um, to get done um, in January. So, well, that's my quilting plan. So um, I'm not real sure what to say at this point. <laughs> oh, I hate it when this happens. Trying to make the transition between quilting and going to my cross stitch. So, um, and make it simple for if you're here for the quilting to say thank you for stopping by. <laughs> and I understand. And if you're here for the cross stitch, it's time. Okay. So, stitching. You'll probably see, well, this isn't really stitching. This is, this could be quilting too. It, it's, uh. A bag actually that I've got hanging up here so I still had some Halloween fabrics left and so I've um, started some bags I think I had that in my last video that I had started those and so I just kind of briefly hung one up there for a background this time around and um, I have another one but it's got a project that I'm going to talk about in a minute so this one is waiting to get kitted up with something cross stitchy for next Halloween um, but in the meantime, I've got a few projects down here beside me that um, I want to go on to. So recently, Stephanie from Cross Stitch the Globe um, recently did a video and uh, she mentioned me and I just want to say thank you for the mention and also that I am, I finally found my project for their Make It Murder Sal. <laughs> so if you're, if you're, not subscribe to them go check them out because they do a really good channel 
uh, or have a really good channel and do a lot of stitching and they're just um, sisters they're fun they're they're cool to watch um, and a couple of their recent videos Stephanie recently moved and so she was talking about uh, the move and the house that they moved into and um, just some vibes that they that she kind of got from it but uh, jokingly jokingly kind of got from it and um, while they were talking about it on the video that they I was watching it while I was watching it it was like 2 a.m. up here in my sewing room and I have a one and a half story house where the attic spaces are on the sides. So they were talking in the one video about uh, people that, I guess, I guess it's become kind of a thing that there are apparently some people that actually try to move into people's homes and live in the attic space. <laughs> <laughs> and so as I'm listening to them talk about that on the video, I'm standing in my sewing room at like 2 a.m. thinking my attic spaces are very much big enough to <laughs> actually be in. <laughs> and and it would be weird, but anyhow, I'm just kind of standing there like it's very quiet in here. <laughs> and I'm wondering, hmm... Like right behind me right here, there's actually about a 10 foot space that runs the length of the house. And you can stand, I mean, you just open a door and walk into it kind of a thing. And so <laughs> it was just kind of, hmm. Well, anyhow, they have several videos where they've talked about, they mostly talk about cross stitch, not that kind of stuff. But uh, one of the other videos, um, some of their discussions kind of led to actually taking a cross stitch and it being before Halloween that they were talking about this, um, actually taking a cross stitch and like turning this really nice little cross stitch into a murder scene. <laughs> and so anyhow, they were just having fun with it. And so um, I was kind of thinking like, what could I do? What could I do? Um, and I thought about maybe charting the game the game clue in a cross stitch but uh it seems really hard <laughs> so I was like eh I don't know if I want to do that um and then I thought about, about a couple other things I think Allison was gonna maybe do one of her uh, uh tiny town cross stitches and it's just a cute little cross stitch and um it's just talking about a couple ways that you know it could be make it murder, <laughs> you know, a little outline or, you know, something like that. Anyhow, um, so I finally figured out what my stitch was going to be for the stitch along. And I was already stitching it, actually, but I thought, hey, this would be perfect. So, sorry for the copy because it's not very good color, but this is the stitch that I'm going to do. It's called Maple Hollow. It's from Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. I believe it's from their 2020, fall 2022 um, issue. And I just think it's really cute. And the, the scarecrow is really cute. And then I'm stitching away and I'm thinking, you know, you know, you could put a little knife in his hand with a little drippy blood. <laughs> that would seem like a murder scene, right? And it could be a stitch for Halloween then. And so, anyhow, here's my progress on that. And I've got my little Halloween decoration there. So I've really only got the, the sign started. Um, but that's what, I, that's what my start is so far this um, year. And like I said, I believe they're starting the sale. I don't know if they started it already and I just am not able to find it. Um, I meant to message Stephanie and see if I'm just not locating it or I'm just I'm not very tech savvy that way so um it's possible that they started it and I just don't know what I'm doing <laughs> so in this bag I also have some other things that I haven't necessarily started let me see I might have some charts here that I don't want to show 
But yes, this is one of the ones that I might do next year for Halloween. Um, Teresa Kogut's Halloween. Um, I did a pattern out of this book, which actually I will try to insert it here. Here, maybe. Um, a pic I have a picture of some... I think I probably showed the stitches before, but I have a picture of some final finishes. And so if I can, I'll try to insert it up here, um, or I'm going to have to cut here. Alright, so, which would be perfect, because I probably need a moment to put my bag back together here. <laughs> Alright, put that one back together. So, the second fall stitching that I've worked on for November. Um, all of a sudden, I can't find it. Okay, here it is, right here. Alright, so... Yep, and I should have prepared because I bet this has the chart in the front of the bag and not the actual picture. Yep. Sorry about this, guys. Okay. You know what? Actually, I think I put it in... Oh, and there I am showing the chart. I think I set it in. Yeah. I took it out of the bag already, and I just forgot that I did that. So, Autumn Love by Lori Holt. So, this was from a quilt that she did several years ago. I have never actually made the quilt. I have the pattern for it, but I've just never really had the time to um, start the blocks and get it all put together. So, I thought, well, I'll start the stitch. Because <laughs> that's how I roll. Do the cross stitch before you do the quilt. Anyhow, um, let's see where I got to. I don't think I got a lot of progress on this one. Nope, I didn't. And actually, I have a bug. <laughs> so I really just finished the first block. So not a lot of progress on that just yet. Um, I may get back to this this month, um, but honestly, it's probably going to go away until I feel the fall vibes again, <laughs> um, which might be January, you know? Sometimes you just want to stitch on something different. So let me get that back in there. Okay, and then for this week, I have actually been stitching on a pattern by, I think it's Cottage Garden, Country Cottage Needleworks, sorry. Country Cottage Needleworks, Fall Harvest, and it's a set of five little images there, and they just put it in a neat little row. I think it was actually a uh, stitch along at one point. I'm not sure exactly. Well, there's all the flosses. There's all my mess, I guess. That's what I can say. And this week, this is what I've got finished on that. And it's, it's not really twisted. It's just that the fabric, the hoop's not holding it all straight. Um, but that's the cute little house. And I still have more to do up here at the top. It's like I'm started down here. More to do here at the top. And then there was a decoration at the top of the block. Um, and then, of course, four more blocks. So, so I will finish this particular block this weekend. And then I'll probably set this one aside till, till I feel the fall vibes all vibes for it too because I want to work on another stitch next week sorry I'm talking downward into the back so I want to start on another stitch next week so that will be this one right here so this is my other Halloween bag and I've gone ahead and made a couple of them slightly oversized 
so that they can fit my scroll frames. All right. One bad thing, though, with this one, I didn't put some pockets in it, and I wish I would have because I've got um, a couple of items down here that I really wish were more in a pocket right here. And I'm thinking next time I may even make that pocket so that I can put the booklets in it. But anyhow, this is the one that I would like to work on next week. And it's Teresa Kogut. It's Harvest Friendship. I think that is so cute, and it will take me a long time to do, but I want to get a start on it. So, and I'm thinking that I will probably start with the border. Yep, I think I'll probably start with the border on that one. And I'm going to do that on, oh, I haven't put a... Oh no, I didn't put a uh, card on this one. So I think it's, honestly, it's probably just very basic 32 count cross stitch fabric from Amazon. Um, so yeah, I don't think I worried too much about reminding myself what it was. And that's my, got that from Fat Quarter Shop in their uh, spooky box. So I've got my magnifiers in there. And then I had some extra Halloween fabrics and an old, old, old zipper. So that's why it's not <laughs> wanting to come open very well. And I just kind of stuffed all my flosses in this little bag here. So... But, like I said, I kind of wish I would have just put a pocket in here. Put those things. Put this back in there. Put my booklet in there. Get my bag organized again. And then... Okay, so... That's basically my stitching for November. I forgot it downstairs. I do have one other pattern that I'm going to work on the week of Thanksgiving. And it is just a little Thanksgiving stitch from, um, uh, punch. It's from Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. I think it was a Teresa Colgate. Just, um, be thankful. Uh, I don't know why. I left the pattern downstairs, so I'll show it to you in December. How's that? Um, because, and I'll just say right here, I'm not planning on doing another video until probably the first week in December, just because we're going to get a little crazy with the holidays here, right? Not crazy. It's fine. Um, but, uh, lots to do, lots to do, right? So, one last thing and then I'll leave you. So, I did order a few items from Fat Quarter Shop. And so let me show you those. So I ordered the wo a couple of pa yeah a couple of pads of the Woven Star um, paper foundation paper, Lori Holt I believe it is. Um, it might not be. It might be just Fat Quarter Shops um, Woven Star paper. But I think Kimberly was doing a stitch uh, so long with um, Lori Holt fabrics for the Woven Star. I don't have I don't have the details in front of me. I'm sorry, um, but I'm pretty sure if you go to the Dolly Jabber blog, it'll have something about doing that. And I was considering starting it in December, so we'll see. Um, other items that I got were some threads and some 36 count uh, Cypress um, Edinburgh linen from uh, Fat Quarter or from Fiber on a Whim from Fat Quarter Shop. This these items should actually be most of what I need for the uh, class that um, Janine McGowan of the Blue Flower is doing for her uh, project called the Festive Forest for the Jingle Ball um, hosted by Lindy Stitches in December. 
And so I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm thinking between Thanksgiving and December 5th when the Jingle Ball um, will start. I actually will get a start on that cross stitch project and I probably won't have it done. I, I won't have it nearly done um, for that particular weekend. But then you have like 30 days to, um, I think, view the class um, portion of the, I, I don't know exactly, the class portion of the stuff. And so if I don't have it done that night, I'm sure that just joining the class and um, seeing how it's done will be just fine when I finally do get it done. And um, it does look like a pretty neat uh, Biscornu. Um, and so I'm ready, set, go for that. Okay, and since I ordered those, um, I actually did enough to get a free mystery cross stitch bag from Fat Quarter Shop. And as you can see, I haven't opened it yet. I was waiting to do this, and so um, I'm going to take my good scissors, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't have anything else over here, but uh, we'll take those and at least get it started. And let's see what we got. Ooh, I can see some goodies already. Okay, so we got a really cute little needle minder. That actually matches my shirt right now. <laughs> All right. And yeah, so that was a Lori Holt. And we got some Lori Holt vintage cloth. 10 count even weave, 17 by 17. So this is pretty neat for some of the vintage projects that she has. Um, I've been trying to move up, on, up into higher count um, stitching. But these are pretty neat for some... Um, yeah, more vintage type stitching. So, and then we got, let me take it out of the, this is perfect, perfect time of year to get this. So, this is red dashed striped wired ribbon from the Stitching with the Housewives. So, it's the perfect finishing touch for some Christmas projects. Awesome. All right, well, that was pretty cool for a freebie. That's awesome. I mean, some of these needle minders these days are getting to be about $10. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I think that was everything. Yeah, that was everything. Oh, no. <gasps> Good thing I checked. <laughs> that was not everything. Perfect. Alright, so it looks like we got Sunset from Classic Color Works and Navy from Weeks Dye Works. Awesome. So wonder, makes me wonder if there isn't maybe a project that actually calls for those. Alright, well I'm going to have to check that out. So I'm going to have to wrap this up so that I can go check that out. <laughs> All right, well, thank you all for watching, and I will see you again December 5th. I don't think there was anything else. I think that was, yeah, that's pretty good catch-up. Um, definitely going to have quite a few Christmas cross-stitches in December, and like I said, I'll have the hopefully the finished top at least for my fall barn quilt. All right, bye. I should also say, is anybody as bad as I am? Did you get the Missouri Star um, Quilt Missouri Star Quilt Company Advent box last year and still have a couple projects to do for it? Hmm. I keep saying maybe this weekend, maybe this weekend, maybe this weekend. I really would like to get this one done. That would be an awesome cross stitch bag. That would be an awesome present. <laughs> <laughs> that would also not take very long.
I don't think. I say that, and then it does. Um, and this one, I mean, I really thought earlier in the year that I was going to take this and not make a pillow out of it, but rather make a bag. This is how far I got. <laughs> All right, well, let me definitely say goodbye now. I should be like Hobbies of Holly and just like pop back in. Hello. <laughs> it's me. Did you miss me?